जादू मंत्र जादू मंत्र जादू मंत्र यू आर गोइंग इन टू द फ्यूचर यू टॉकिंग मी A always be B C closing. Yeah. Ever want to get any more better than that? The queen is dead. This episode of Queen is Dead is brought to you by Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Google Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor.fm to get started. making our food out of people next thing they'll be breeding us like cattle for food you got to tell them you got to tell them promise tiger i promise i'll tell the exchange you tell everybody listen to me hatcher you got to tell them silent breed is people record yeah we have started hello 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 welcome <laughs> welcome to welcome Queen's welcome bhai lo We've got uh, Mr. Gunty here as well. Yeah, I'm. Welcome back. I'm, I, thanks, man. I was uh, on a long trip. I was. Welcome in the returns. Welcome returns. Yeah. My God, Anis Basmi is welcome. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I just saw Tenet. Did you guys see Tenet? Yes, yes. Yeah, I saw yeah, yeah. My birthday. What do you guys think of it, Gunty? Oh, uh, spectacularly mediocre. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wow, that's that's Elaborate, my please. words, exact words that you no. put in the print. Ah, uh, it is spectacular, <laughs> and then I then then after watching it three times, mediocre. Uh, what do you think, Sajit? Yeah, I don't know. I the thing is, I watched Tenet in theater after like whatever nine months. So I was most of all excited to watch <laughs> yeah. it in the theater in the first place. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't care actually how it was in the beginning. I watched it twice actually, mm-hmm. uh, two days back to back, on two different shows. Uh, it was good. Like it's not as good as whatever Nolan has made before. To be honest, let's be like fair about all of this. Yeah. But there are like a lot of good. Th- it's actually a dumb smart movie. So you know. Yeah. Mm. It's not pretentious, but it's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought I didn't, was... I didn't hate it. Also. You didn't hate it. No, no, no. Okay, because a lot of people are hating it, right? No, yeah. I mean, no people feel, are saying there's no hate to be had for that movie. People are even saying like, uh, this is the movie that made them hate Nolan. What made them? Yeah, hate Nolan? that's because he's been like too indulgent with this film. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That too, even Tarantino's uh, Once Upon a Time was hated, right? Even Irishman was hated. But I think the the extent to in this is a little bit more, especially on the internet. I mean, people are really. And I think he came yeah. out with a bunch of interviews where he was championing the theater experience and you know yeah. trashing right, right, right. stuff, and that made it worse. I think. Yeah. No, no, no. I think so. Uh, if you watch it anywhere else apart from theater, you are not going to like it. Yeah. I can guarantee it to you. Yeah. Because very, the thing is, in theater, there are in the film there are like so many things that are happening hmm. that you like sort of like can't stop and think back actually. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's all about that present experience that you're having, like right at that moment, yeah. and no sense of like you know thinking back at what oh what just happened right now. Yeah, and you're moving ahead, you're moving forward. Otherwise, you lo- lose a lot of details in it. Yeah, he and it is, uh, the, and he said it's meant for repeated viewing, which uh, which he shouldn't have said. Uh, it's it's more of a he's designed it for a very nice theater also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think like it it didn't feel so much like a Nolan movie as much as it did some uh, Mission Impossible thing <laughs> where you know it's a bunch yeah. of set pieces and you know there's no there's no like you don't pay attention to the story at least. No, I'm not saying yeah. there's no story, but at least like mm. you you're enjoying the set pieces a little bit more than the actual concept of it because I didn't keep up with the concept at all. 
and it was like every yeah. single mm-hmm. minute so many things are thrown at you through exposition i mean there's yeah, one yeah. scene like towards the beginning i mean okay the dimple kapadia scene is more or less fine but then there's one table scene with michael ken and i couldn't keep up with anything it was just like every line it was something new i was like what 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 <laughs> same yeah, same yeah. right 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 i i agree and, with that i think so that's also more so because he does he doesn't write like really good dialogue also mm-hmm. yeah i think he made it very like slick dialogue like you know cool sounding right yeah right right even like the whole poeticism of the cinematic nature of it sounds you know the dialogue sound very clunky Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what were you so, saying, Gandhi? I don't know. Yeah, but isn't Bond the same? Like, do you? Yeah, Bond really is the thing care? that this resembles the most. I think I was constantly yeah, thinking yeah. of Bond. He was right. going for Bond and more of uh, you know that globe trotting mission, like Mission Impossible. Bond. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. All right. these three guys, like uh, what's his name, Kenneth Branagh, his wife, yeah, Dimple Kapadia. uh robert pattinson all of them are kind of like bond villains in a sense not yeah. pattinson others are kind of like the bond villain type of character i mean they talk that way i mean kenneth brana i don't know how what he's doing mm. yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> he actually went full in yeah i mean i, I don't that whole he felt little out of depth in this movie i think uh, nolan in general like it felt like some set pieces were you know in that mission impossible like the latest mission impossible style kind of like force yeah. fit into the narrative like yeah. i didn't think it kind of flowed into it's very seamlessly or anything what was that that sailing scene man like the race sailing scene i don't even know what the point yeah, yeah, of yeah. that was i don't know how it led up to that it just happened yeah <laughs> And you know one scene like it was so surprising there was one uh okay this is spoilers so i mean i don't okay. know if there's any spoilers I possible mean, yeah. for this. you can't spoil it <laughs> yeah yeah uh it's like just bunch of stuff happens that's the <laughs> su- synopsis <laughs> and uh he gets hypothermia <laughs> oh wow yeah. what does it do to the movie nothing it does <laughs> yeah 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 so there's one scene where like he's fighting himself right so like this this corridor mm. door opens and then this guy comes in wearing a full mask like suspiciously even he has gloves and like all his skin tone is also covered except for like eyes like this and uh, uh, ma- the main guy john david washington fights him and the first thing i thought is he's fighting himself right yeah and yeah. because mm. it's a, it's like christopher nolan movie like what else do you even yeah. expect at this point <laughs> and he played that for suspense like in the next scene like okay he removes his mask and robert pattinson sees it's like da- uh, john david washington And I was like, I'm not surprised at this. Yeah, yeah. Me neither. Me neither. It would have been surprising if it was like Matt Damon, like Interstellar. It's <laughs> 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 like the first thing you expect is it's the same guy. Like I, yeah. I was thinking, like why would a no one like surprise you at that point? Like it seemed like very, yeah, it's obvious, yeah. no. You know that that is one reason why Dunkirk was his. I still feel his best movie. because you're not surprised by anything you're, you're he's not going to one up you in some way he's not trying to outsmart mm-hmm. you in some way he's just trying to sh- give you a story which is as exciting as possible and as suspenseful and this has no suspense mm-hmm. this is like that uh, oh he had a twin in uh, prestige <laughs> and it was played as a third home like no that's not that's not really surprising he looks like him. what the hell yeah i mean like yeah. adam kirk i think he was like trying to pull back from that you know mind bending uh thing that he's known for and also yeah. dead mm-hmm. wives uh yeah. that there's like just a plain narrative and then okay there are some concept you know with that time uh, running down with like that one week one day whatever yeah that was a good, brilliant concept and that's it it ended there it didn't they didn't try to again like oh wow we're going to do something new they're all <clears throat> the same people i think i think what has happened is post i think interstellar like when he made dunkirk you know he made dunkirk actually only and only for that whole experience uh, kind of thing yeah and you know actually like yeah. the biggest criticism for T- uh, tenet and dunkirk has been like what there are like no characters like no central like even if there are like central characters you mm. don't you know sympathize with them yeah they have no like personality i mean this is like the yeah. opposite extreme in this it's like literally a guy named the yeah. protagonist yeah <laughs> exactly exactly that's what i'm trying to say and he just went another level he's like you like your to he just he's just telling you he's just giving you so much in your face you ha- don't have to care about these characters you're going only and only in for this experience yeah like he's literally telling you he's not even giving that character a name i mean what what else do you need to know about all of this 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like I don't think there's a he, one, you're gonna he actually he purely wanted to do that film for six pieces. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Oh no, I missed your what you said. Uh, uh, what you said? No, no, I was just saying that he he did uh, this film as like a, he like he mounted all of his techniques what he learned in Dunkirk and tried doing all of that here and like mounted it on a different scale. Employed all his you know. Um, his tropes his all his conceptual science yeah. that he likes and like he made like a big budget action film it was described in one of the reviews as like bond on acid i think yeah. that is that is pretty, pretty much it the pretty much the film you know while you're on drugs you you probably don't even care about the personality of those characters mm-hmm. i mean yeah what is the what is a better way to describe this yeah. i mean there were some scenes with like just ridiculous dialogue though i was just telling someone like asking someone about <laughs> the scene like the towards the end there's like robert parenson is leaving and he's like i, I don't know what right. what is happening at this point but he's just leaving uh, the main guy and he's like going to on a leaving uh, on a plane and then he yeah. says some a bunch of stuff like completely just like palindrome like uh, just random shit it's like uh, uh, see you in the past and then it's like past is present is back to the future blah blah, blah. i'm like what are you saying bro <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, like next level yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. The yeah. easiest way to describe uh, Tenet is like that. Its basic idea is uh, of Terminator only. Like a future <laughs> personality sends his past hmm. personality to help him. But then the past personality is also sending to the future, and then they meet in the <laughs> middle, and it crashes, and a plane crashes into building. <laughs> Done. Tenet. Every, you know, you know. And I, everything I tell surrounds you, one car chase. Of yeah. all things, like I, I'll to tell you one from. thing. I still don't understand that last sequence. Like, I don't know who those people are fighting actually. I know, I know. I don't understand anything. <laughs> I, I understood one hour into it, first, I think I was lost. I, I I phased out when they were all talking about that relationship between this guy. Like, why she's? I didn't understand why he's holding exactly. Her that is that, that is the Michael Caine scene. No, like that's yeah, when he's yeah, explaining yeah. their relationship, and he's like, "There's a painting." And then uh, the guy is selling a fake Sh- painting or, he's to the girl. Shaitor. Yeah, Shaitor. Shaitor. <laughs> Shaitor. <For, laughs> and that too through food. He's talking through food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's so casual, like you know, World War Three. World is ending. <laughs> Chill, guys. You know, I, he he actually just purposefully put that uh, lady's character. I forgot that. Forgot her character. Uh, Char- Elizabeth like, Debicki. Name, actress's name. Mm. Debicki. Debicki. I think he just yeah. purposefully put that character just so that that ca- uh, our lead protagonist has something to you know root for or like yeah, work yeah, hard yeah. for something. Yeah. I think there's no other purpose to that. So I think he used all his things you know uh, and put it in like in the cheapest dynamics possible, <laughs> you know. Yeah. For that yeah. character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't. See, now that I think of it, there is no interpersonal relationship in this movie. <laughs> nothing <laughs> there's just characters in their own tell i mean this is the most superficial ca- you know relations that is built in this film like it was a yeah. hundred times better in inception when that character had to you know yeah. uh, actually go back and see his kids because he had yeah. some personality you know like he, he yeah. can like relate somewhat but this guy it's like i don't right, know right. Who, and he's kind of like monotone most of the time also i think that, yeah yeah but i don't think so he could have done some what he did whatever he could with that with that character i don't know what he could have done yeah. anything more even dicaprio did even have a sense of humor in the whole movie in inception now that i think of it and he still was more relatable he just <laughs> did a lot of i just squinted i forgot this is audio <laughs> 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 Uh, a future video podcast. Yeah. Nasi, yeah. no, no, that's too expensive. Lala, yeah, no, no, let's see audio. Nobody yeah. wants to see our faces. People yeah. only want to see Karthik's face. There's always a very bad disconnect between people's faces and their voices when we listen to a podcast. Yeah, some people sound like older or younger. And... Yeah, or they'll be like, you know, that Karthik, doesn't suit Karthik you. Karthik like, sounds macho. What do I do macho, with my voice? Ha ha! What? <laughs> Karthik. <laughs> Karthik sounds the most macho esque. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah, it's because of Blue Yeti. Shout out to oh. Blue Yeti. <laughs> sponsor our podcast. Yeah, Blue Yeti, please sponsor. 
Also, what is Anchor doing sponsoring its own podcast also? I want to ask. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Dude, that's the whole Spotify scheme, right? They'll give you ads to tell you that, hey, we're going <laughs> to remove these but ads. But you're uploading <laughs> on Anchor, on right? Like, you're yeah, uploading yeah. on Anchor, right? It's like if you put YouTube video and in the beginning, YouTube ad comes. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> Don't you get YouTube ads or like Google ads? Google, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, but come so, back. Okay, yeah, anyways, like, so, uh, so we're talking about sci-fi movies. Yeah. So just Strong, just three like, sci-fi movies that we all like, I guess, or... Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Just three we've picked in random. Uh, these aren't like, you know, top sci-fi movies of all time or anything. Just no, 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 no. Yeah, these are not at all. <laughs> yeah. I don't think... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'll go first. I don't think Time Bandit is the all-time best, <laughs> best sci-fi movie. <laughs> But it yeah, is yeah, yeah. it is a start. <laughs> uh, cool. So, what is your first pick? Yeah. Uh, okay, my first pick is actually uh, High Life. This is uh, a Robert Pattinson movie. It's mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's uh, Claire Denis uh, who Claire uh, Denis, director, yeah. and uh, she's known for these very uh, you know like uh, if you've seen any of her movies, I saw like two of her movies before this, and I'd heard she's very like. You know, high concept and some... Uh, like, I saw the one that she was uh, nominated for an Oscar for. It was uh, Let the Sunshine In. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. then I went back and I realized I've seen Shokala. Because it used to come in UTV World Movies. She uh, made that? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not the Shokala that you're thinking of. This is not yeah, the genre yeah, yeah. I Shokala. thought so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is another Shokala. But uh, it was a very slow, pretty nice movie. A very, like, slice of life. Loved it actually, um, yeah. And Ladda uh, Sunshine is really a terrific movie. So uh, High Life is a very high. Co- it's not very high concept. Uh, almost all the high concept stuff is in the background, which is great. And this is the kind mm-hmm. of sci-fi movie that I like, where it's more about the characters than the concept itself, which is the reverse that Tenet did. But let's not get back to that. Um, <laughs> my next one is going to be uh, Dread, which is a like a really badass movie. Uh, it's mm. got these amazing slow-mo shots. It's a great action movie. It was directed by uh, Pete Travis. Or, or, or Ghost directed the... by Alex Garland. What? Ghost what directed by Alex oh, Garland. Ghost directed? What? I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like parts oh, of it were directed it's by... Oh, screenplay. <coughs> no, no, he wrote it and he directed... Uh, he ghosted it because like the producers were like fed up of uh, uh, the original oh, director. Pete Travis? Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. really? Wow. I guess yeah. that's how Alex Garden got his break. Like um, no, no, he, he is, he, but, wasn't he always writing stuff before that? Okay, I whatever. But huh? uh, I you really continue. liked. Uh, I've seen uh, like um, he, his like I've seen most of his screenplays have been like very uh, British for some reason. Like all of them, are, isn't he British? Is he? He is British. He is. Right? He is British. But his is this style a of to Judge Dredd. No, no, not not exactly. I think this it's is like a. a New take As on the character. One. Yeah, it's not. It's not okay. really the. It's a. It's based on a, like a comic. So all of the mm. stuff is already there. All the characters are there. The world is already there, and he's just like fighting new enemies. It's like a, another storyline, and uh, mm. it's definitely a movie that. Uh, I mean, it's got a pretty good budget, so it has a really nice look to it. Right. Uh, it's it's but it has a very indie feel to it. Uh, the shots are very uh, you know like. Very nicely uh, composed and everything. There's Anthony Dow, Dot Mantle. Check out his uh, podcast with Roger Deakins. Um, there's oh. a very, very nice scene where they do like uh, a whole slow-mo uh, shootout and everything. And there's like a production mm-hmm. that they're doing uh, for slow uh, with like slow-mo and stuff. It's a really cool scene. A lot of cool scenes, great plot. And Carl Urban is not used enough. He's getting back with the boys and stuff, but uh, this was hmm. seriously the time that they should have used him, and they really like missed a chance. Mm. And uh, yeah, like I love this movie. Uh, have to check it out. Uh, you can find this on VOD. Uh, I found it on uh, Vudu, and I watched it there. Uh, Bro, where do you live? I okay, yes, yeah, so, okay. So I live in the US, so it might not be available for everyone else. Uh, I would suggest there is a, a sale going on on, uh, on uh, Prime Video for it on in India as well as uh, here, like a lot of movies like this. So you can either buy it or, you know, imagine it. 
just read the <laughs> plot on wikipedia and then imagine how the movie might be and then you can become a film that's the best that. way <laughs> so that then that's you've done half the half the gig biswa uh, approves of it yeah 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 uh so my third movie is going to be uh, eternal sasha spotless mind which is one of my favorite movies of all time and it's mm. pretty much like the be- like a like a masterclass in good direction good writing and good acting mm. because none of them matched like the director had a completely different vision <laughs> than the screenplay the screenplay was way longer than it was supposed to be and the actors didn't like the dialogue that they had <laughs> so they all ad libbed everything was documentary style kind of but a lot of this, a lot of the stuff was planned by the director himself michel gondry who is like one of the most like the greatest guys right now and i wish he got uh, also check out his show kidding brilliant brilliant show mm mm-hmm. mm uh, it also spot is uh, is a short movie uh, surprisingly and it does so much in that movie, uh, in that time that it has that no other movie has ever been able to do Uh, mm-hmm. it's a great movie and it's a very simple plot if you really think about it uh, it's like not really a spo- like uh, a spoiler like it's in the trailer but uh, he has uh, decided to get his um, his girlfriend out of his mind and memories and then in the middle of the movie he decided ah, i don't want that and he just goes back and then it's a huge allegory of how like love is uh, messy and that is like that whole theme of love being messy is um, is shown in a sci-fi way and it's shown through almost every single character in the movie every single character in the movie is perfectly mm. written perfectly plays a role mm. in the story brilliant brilliant movie yeah great mm. screen i mean if you want to read the screenplay of this movie read, read the screenplay if you ever interested in reading screenplays i don't think a lot of people are but uh, if you want like a, just a master class in writing a good screenplay this is it mm-hmm. like if you want to get into filmmaking mm. But that's it. Like all of these are very filmmaking-y kind of movies. <laughs> I mean, I mean like, more than uh, that. Uh, these yeah. these are conceptually sci-fi films, but they double up as yeah. other genre films as well, right? Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Yes, that's that's I the think, kind of, that's my f- sweet spot. Same, same. That that works for me as well. Like I I think so. Like what sci-fi has done, like it gives you a very uh, in in people's heads. it gives you a very certain kind of vision of what sci-fi actually looks like but there's much more to sci-fi actually yes. you know and yes. only like a good few filmmakers have used sci-fi you know in thematic sense of using uh, you know even star wars even though it is like a yeah uh, opera it's, type yeah, kind of movie you know how sci- sci-fi yeah it is sci-fi i mean it is it fantasy is sci-fi. sci-fi it isn't sci-fi i it don't is think sci-fi. it's sci-fi Come it's on. an adventure star movie. wars Star Wars like, is a sci-fi adventure fantasy movie. But if you really look at it, there is nothing science about it. It is science fiction. What when I asked, it? when you go back to Asimov, when you talk to Asimov and you say, "Hey man, what are you writing about?" Hey, I'm writing about positronic brains, bro. And uh, he'd be like, "Why are you writing that?" I'm trying to tell a My story God. about a boy and his little dog on the moon. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Uh, like, good luck with that, bro. And then okay, you just fine. go away and then find okay, out Azuma was the biggest like sci-fi writer ever. Come on, man! <laughs> Don't find no, all I, that. All I'm trying to say <laughs> that is that was an adventure movie. Interstellar was an adventure movie. There's not really no, uh, that much of a science factor to it. I expect. Of, what are you I mean, saying? Of, not like a science factor. No, okay, not that what? science factor. Meaning that the story is affected by science. It's a good oh. science fiction movie past mm. the point of the second half. But the I mean, the so, story so that's is what about it's come to man right. and his daughter. Yeah, that's yeah, what it's come to, right? Part. All these sci-fi movies double yeah. up as other genre movies, or like a very, or like a story that adapts the sci-fi genre into it. Like it, you know, yeah, uses yeah, yeah. it in its DNA for storytelling. <laughs> But sci-fi as a whole yes. does not really, you know, you don't really see all those kind of like very sci-fi issues now. Like I don't know. Yeah. What would I, I call it? I think Star Trek is actually a sci-fi, a more of a sci-fi movie than or a series than. Uh, then star wars oh definitely yeah right right because because it's about the, there is science affecting everything i should take back what i said about interstellar but uh, nolan has designed it as an adventure movie that's what it seems mm-hmm. like one. right uh, but uh, star trek definitely a lot more sci-fi than star wars right right although both of them are great i'm not saying that uh, there's no anything Once bad with them yeah. it's just that science fiction has a separate definition and uh, yeah mm-hmm. a lot like movie i mean like character movies and everything that makes up for uh, 
any movie actually i think i think i got into watching sci-fi movies in the more in the i did not like to say like generic uh, hollywood sci-fi films uh, but like you know all those schwarzenegger sci-fi movies you know uh, i don't even remember the name total recall total recall total oh, recall yes. and sixth day and stuff all of like yeah. that and even like uh, yeah. demolition man that's salons demolition yes. man yes yes and you know that's star wars alone, yeah. which i still consider as a sci-fi film even uh, judge dread was still on yeah yeah judge dread was still on right 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 yeah so i started watching yeah. with those but over time i picked up a very different kind of uh, i i started liking a different style of sci-fi that worked for me you know like sci- like for example the, the the films that i'm going to recommend are uh, belong to one other like can double up as horror films as well right yes. and <clears throat> like the first one that i'll that i'll recommend is uh, invasion of body snatchers uh the donald sutherland one oh, yeah. 1978 one not the older one mm-hmm. so Which so is this is not the original right huh no 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 the original one was like a 54 1954 film i don't know or is 1964 yeah. film. it was directed by don siegel so i don't know mm-hmm. i haven't seen that but don siegel is a very good director so i don't know yeah. he also made the big eyed which is the original big eyed not the sofia coppola one yeah 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 right 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 No, you know Don Siegel used to work with Clint Eastwood a lot, so you know he's made like a bunch of good films. And uh, so, Invasion of Body Snatchers, the one I'm talking is 1978, and it was directed by Philip Kaufman. So it's actually a very, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I like this sort of, uh, you know, horror sci-fi blend, where you actually can't really reason mm-hmm. a certain set of things. You know, things happen because they are meant to happen, really. You know, so <clears throat> yeah. I know I think a lot of people might associate invasion of body snatchers with that one image uh, of you know Donald Sutherland pointing at someone you know and you yeah. know but anyway so the the point being um, this film is set uh, in a very normal society uh, something which very absolutely normal you don't expect anything abnormal to happen or something like that and Donald Sutherland it follows the story of you know Donald Sutherland's character who like starts mm. assuming that is that his friend is having like mar issues and he starts behaving very weirdly and everything and <clears throat> and you know then slowly slowly pe- people start getting to know this this you know this invisible enemy uh, this you know extraterrestrial thing that has landed on earth and it's like you know getting into people and people start becoming the uh, that that beings slave so i don't want to tell anything more than that because it's it's, it's a very good experience in my opinion more than yeah. like a story as a whole or whatever so it's pretty much the same story as the original one right 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 yeah it's it's based yeah, actually yeah, it based is. on novel if i'm not wrong uh body snatchers yeah. and then the original yeah. one was in that kind of uh, 50s era where all the sci-fi movies started coming up uh, like creature from the black lagoon right. and i think at yeah. that time they also remade uh, fritz lang's m and stuff like that yeah so yeah. around that time so it's like this uh, hmm. us they had this uh, cold war cri- uh, right. what do you call it like they were afraid of the cold war happening yeah the panic cold war paranoia and then like all the sci-fi right. movies got made as a result and right yeah. right yeah. right but but this one also has those elements of paranoia and everything because there's this guy because obviously there's a lot of allegory here which i'd not like to discuss because i think so it's for the viewers to uh, you know discover themselves but this is one of those films that i'll always recommend as a sci-fi film um and mm. the next one which i'll recommend is uh, annihilation which is directed by alex garland oh. who we just spoke about dread and this is his yeah. i think is his directorial no this was his second directorial uh, film second the first yeah, one was yeah. ex After machina ex right yeah. and um, you know this guy I, for people who don't know alex garland uh, had been like writing screenplays for uh, danny boyle uh, i don't know and novels and yeah he wrote the beach no yeah he wrote the beach but he also wrote one of my uh, very good like one of my favorite space films which was recommended to me by gunty which was sunshine yes it's it's a brilliant it's a, brilliant film but it's if yeah. you if you want to take it as a recommendation that is also a recommendation but you know alex garland has yeah. been writing all these sci-fi films novels and all of those things and i think it's been very recent like in the last 4 5 years that he got into uh, directing sci-fi films he made ex machina and then he made annihilation and then he made a show called uh, devs But anyway, right now I'll just talk about mm-hmm. Annihilation, and you know, when I watched it, for me, it's in in an ideal world, in an ideal case, its significance to cinematic literature should be as good as you know probably two thousand one. 
you know because it's talking about a lot of things which 2001 also did in its own way i'm not saying it's like a, a like a parallel copy or whatever but you know annihilation worked for me for a lot of things because it was trying to say a lot of things you know it wasn't just sci-fi for the sake of sci-fi it was like really you know yeah. that sci-fi was in its dna so annihilation i'll, I'll just tell like the basic storyline um it's basically it follows the story of uh, um natalie portman's character who joins this uh, you know um this organization uh, american organization organization where um her her husband also worked for the organization and her husband is trapped in a in a certain area x which has this you know shimmer like this you know weird lights that are flashing and you know weird um, things so there are a lot of weird things that are happening yeah, beyond that shimmer worldly, field this other worldly place inside of our world right 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 so all of this is happening on the earth and it's goddamn brilliant like i i don't know how to explain even better like i i can't put it in words also because... the same plot for devs by the way if you think about it is it yeah no i don't think so yeah because he's in his own he, yeah. he's in his own world and everything mm-hmm. right okay maybe i don't know this guy ron swanson also devs has ron swanson so you should watch yeah. that movie. you should so watch, so annihilation yeah. works for me because the like and also annihilation works for me because it's it is cosmic horror which is not you know uh, your usual yeah. kind of horror so cosmic horror for people who don't know is not very easy genre to do in in film because cosmic horrors in bread like definition is that you know uh, there's nothing very tangible right and even in this case yeah. what happens is when she where is this force field around this area which i just said shimmer and a lot of weird things yeah. are happening the, these mutations and all that so like a lot of theories are that that this um be came from the from outer space is trying to mutate on uh, and start like a diverse living life on planet so what i'm trying to say it, it works sort yeah. of like 2001 you know where that uh, monolith appears amongst those apes right so yeah, so it's sort then, of it's sort of like that but it's not like very similar in storytelling wise so this is my another recommendation Yeah. My third recommendation is uh, mm-hmm. another cosmic horror film which doubles up as as a sci-fi film uh, is Color Out of Space which which stars um, our very own favorite uh, Nicolas Cage in that whole you know that uh, oh, the the wait, wait, the, the, uh, the Oscar winning Nicolas Cage Yeah right Yeah <laughs> <laughs> What's his what's his famous line I forgot Like oh, wow. oh, you get me Are you are you trying to imitate face of or like con air stuff? Yeah. Oh well. Oh, that's just perfect. Uh. <laughs> oh, you guys should. I don't know if people have seen face of, but like face of is one of my all time favorite action movies. Of you know, I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> face off is like, hey, hey, come on, and then like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then the voices switch, but like face. <laughs> But, you know, guns, gun fu. and you know dubs flying so it's one of yeah, the, but anyway coming back and their faces get switched yeah the face get oh. coming back coming back um you know um yeah. <laughs> color out of space also uh, all these three films have this one similar idea of of a very uh, unknown um object that lands from space on land and you know it causes a lot of trouble so these three all these three films which i just said invasion of body snatchers annihilation and color out of space have the same kind of thing that happens to them so <clears throat> and for for annihilation and color out of space they are very hp lovecraft uh, kind of you know storytelling and color out of space is a direct adaptation of a lovecraft story i don't know which one but i think i yeah. went for some like movie quiz where there was some question about uh, color out of space and then the plot of color out of space is this alien comes to earth who uh-huh. uh, what is it like there's no color or something right no there's this pink color that that spreads all around yeah. yeah this kind of thing entity comes from outer space that yeah yeah it becomes very visually trippy kind of experience as a but what know, is I, the catch like they can't see it or something right no th- so in all these three films it's sort of like cosmic horror only so you can't really give like this this horror like a very tangible thing you know it, it's the same yeah, there's thing there's no explanation as, to it why it's there there's no explanation to it right yeah which i just said in the beginning also there's no expression there's no person or no it's just something that is in the air basically right yeah. you can't touch it you can't feel it but you know 
so there's this you know this pink light spreads all around this place you know nick cage's family comes and settles in a very desolate um you know place near like a river in like very jungle type place and they start ex- getting all these but isn't the isn't the idea of the movie that they can't see this color no they can see that no, color they can see the effects of the color yeah they can see the effects yeah but they can't scale. see the actual thing right and, and they start going crazy by the time i i don't want to reveal the ending but you know something happens which which i which what karthik just said I, it's not exactly the same thing but sort of like that happens later on but uh, yeah i think these are my recommendations i don't know where color out of space is available but annihilation is available on uh, netflix i don't know where invasion of body snatch is available so if you are into illegal uh, downloading color out of space is on sling in the us uh, it's there on prime video also uh, i see it in my prime video is there Probably. color out of space is there here and in india so these are like my sci-fi film recommendations but these are they can double up as like horror films as well so you know you know my favorite list yeah i guess all, the all of them are horrors <laughs> yeah but just to talk about this thing annihilation yeah i felt yeah. like the same thing about that and devs which is like it mm. was a super interesting concept but around halfway it kind of lost me like uh, I, i don't know like it there was two there were a lot of ideas that were like true original uh, science fiction ideas and that you know probably comes from the fact that this guy is a science fiction writer also he writes novels and yeah. everything but then around like the halfway point both like halfway through the series devs and mm-hmm. uh, in annihilation it kind of like lost me like it became little like i don't know incoherent types okay. like okay the the it, the concept was like really interesting in both right like even in devs it's like okay this uh, what is it like some software engineering company who's like doing something and then hmm. one guy goes missing hmm. yeah. similarly in annihilation also it's like yeah. there's this thing called the shimmer mm-hmm. and then they yeah. enter that world and then the weird things start happening till that point it's okay like after that i don't know like i couldn't really keep up with hmm. it in a sense i i think i think what yeah. happens is um alex garland isn't really making a very uh, is making this these sci-fi p- films as you know human pieces as well so yeah. he keeps that human psyche in you know in mind while writing that that whole story or like the screenplay or whatever and what happens is uh, i mean it's not a spoiler in any sense but what happens is uh, what is human nature right like it's it tends to be self destructive in nature and you know destruction is a part of it so it goes it tries to go from that whole sci-fi conceptual thing into that whole human nature uh, thing okay so that is why mm-hmm. i think it becomes a little incoherent in that sense because you know it, it it's talking about all these sci-fi ideas and all these thematic things and everything but then it you know drives itself into that whole human how would like humans react to all this that is happening around them right humans are destructive in you know inherently destructive in nature so it becomes sort of in that mm-hmm. that zone that is why it probably doesn't really land um, you know cohesively for people but it it worked for mm-hmm. me because you know um he is not using like that i just said before like sci-fi is not a gimmick here and like or sci-fi or horror yeah. whatever it's not a gimmick or anything like he's not doing it for like mm. the you know um for the yeah, sake of doing it basically right so it works because of that for me yeah but what about you uh three films that you would like to recommend okay so like i'm not like big uh, sci-fi like uh, expert or anything like mm-hmm. i've just seen movies that are, have that label of sci-fi like you mentioned right not, not pure sci-fi because there's mm-hmm. a whole lot of people who are into that kind of stuff like uh, who like all these movies like transcendence and uh, lucy right. uh, <laughs> yeah i mean they don't mind that the movie isn't as good as you know like a great movie but yeah. they're right. into like the sci-fi ideas and all but I, i'm not into right. it that much me neither uh yes uh, so like i have three picks first pick i'd say is a scanner darkly oh, which is okay. uh, a richard linklater, linklater movie which yeah. is uh, based on the novel uh, scanner darkly by philip k dick who's like a like one of the be- biggest uh, science fiction writers right right yeah uh, i think he wrote uh, do android blade dream? runner D- dream yeah, yeah blade runner android dream of electric sheep yeah yeah, yeah yeah so it's like this very dystopian kind of story and uh, it's taking place in the future hmm. and uh, also <clears throat> notably it is like rotoscoped which means that like the people acted and then over the uh over what was shot they drew uh you know animation and so the whole movie is animated basically but they also shot it yeah uh, 
So it stars uh, Keanu Reeves, Robert Downey Jr., Woody Harrelson, hmm. Winona Ryder, hmm. all big names, and uh, directed by Richard Linklater. Yeah. And it is like this dystopian tale of like this uh, war on drugs type of uh, situation. Hmm. Uh, and yeah. I mean, I really like this movie. A lot of people find it a little uh, confusing, but I mean, I didn't mind the confusing part of it because it was like scene to scene. It was very interesting. So even if you didn't yeah. keep up with the whole movie, yeah, I don't think it mattered. Like the first time you see it, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if you understand it. It's almost like a, a he uh, designed it as like one of those noir thrillers. but yeah. uh is very like the big sleep or i guess even the big lebowski but, yeah, but yeah, they're all like, like uh, yeah it's a very convoluted name? plot uh the what's the big sleep guy's name raymond uh, chandler raymond chandler yeah so yeah raymond yeah. chandler is this guy who used to write all these uh, novels which the are big... these very sprawling narratives and you can't keep up with what is happening yeah uh so yeah this is kind of in that style of like the big sleep or whatever uh, uh those kind of stories basically Hmm. So I mean it starts off with this uh you know uh drug related plot and then it goes in, in its own way I mean um it's a little hard to keep up but I mean at at the end you get this feeling of uh you know like a payoff kind of feeling so I mean I really like it and uh, I think it contains really good performances also especially somebody like Robert Downey Jr hmm. this is before he got into Iron Man and that whole universe hmm. and yeah. uh, I this was just his after his like yeah is one of his like his comeback movies yeah and it actually really fits his personality also it's just like yeah. very fast talking kind of uh, uh like you know constantly saying all these one liners type yeah. of uh, character yeah. uh, unfortunately somebody literally drew over it so uh, i don't <laughs> think it's considered as one of his best performances but it is it is uh, yeah. yeah i mean richard linklater movie and it's got a really good kind of uh, mood also like the whole you know sci-fi kind of conspiratorial mood is there which is you know, very enjoyable i think if you enjoyable. if you ever get the dvd of this movie there is a, a non anime roto animated uh, uh, version mm. of this uh, of the whole movie basically oh so yeah. if you want you can still watch and i think it's just parts of it i'm not sure but how would that, that work though doesn't keanu reeves wear a suit that uh, constantly changes color or something like constantly changes yeah. There is yeah, there are like scenes of it that don't make sense at all. It's it's like the one that they said, uh, which movie was supposed to see be seen in black and white? Parasite. Yeah, in the DVD they said that there's a black and white version of it. And that's the way you're supposed to watch the movie. That's being done with a lot of movies now. It's like Mad Max Fury Road. Uh... Yeah, Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So like yeah, people so, just uh... decide that yeah, that's the best version to see it in. Hmm. Right. 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 Yeah. But then I I do think but the animation is, is good though like it's, it's yeah, it works definitely an improvement than uh, Waking Life which is Linklater's previous movie also Rotoscope. Right right. Yeah, I yeah. think like he actually got to make it a little better in this like before it was kind yeah. of trial and error. Hmm. Yeah. This uh, one works with the yeah. story because it's all about uh, drugs and everything so it makes total sense. Right right right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so that's my first pick. Uh second pick is Brazil by uh also by Terry, Terry Gilliam we mentioned Time Bandits before uh, again very dystopian kind of science fiction movie yeah mm. uh, and i mean it's uh, it's a little difficult to describe the plot of brazil uh, but <laughs> yeah. it's kind of this uh, i watched it i watched it thrice i still don't remember the plot i just watched it for like but but gunty at one point was a huge huge terry gilliam fan yeah how would you describe like the style of terry gilliam though like all these uh, um, brazil and time bandits uh they are spectacularly thoughtful there's a lot of spectacular stuff and they're very thoughtful like every single frame that he makes he usually has a sense to it because he's an animator he was the animator for monty python then he got into a lot of the skits and mm-hmm. he's one of the people in spanish inquisition nobody expects the spanish inquisition that like, he's one of those dudes and uh, he has been doing really weird movies and he sticks to it uh if you ever want to see something um, really weird then watch fisher king yeah i've seen it it's a great movie one of the best performances by uh, robin williams hmm. uh, and yeah literally all his movies are, there is literally a style of uh, lens uh, and co- composition that's called the the the, the kelliamesque shot hmm and there is a uh, i think it's the 17 mm uh, uh, like um, lens 
that he uses for almost everything, which is uh, heavily used in uh, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And a lot of more, like, uh, people were, like, after us, the, like, the weekend, uh, the, uh, like, the shot, his album movie, that, that uh, yeah. was all, like, based out of uh, Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. People like, oh, wow, there's so many cinematic references in this. It, it's so deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you have a TikTok song. So, wow. Uh, and then there's, like, a, yeah. So, uh, but uh, Terry Gilliam made such... Um, out there movies and, and with a good budget and he really fought for those budgets uh, to make them go, like look as good as uh, they did mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah he didn't make any compromises ever in all of his movies which was great yeah and that's why he gets such like movies that like live for so long especially right. the one so like it's uh, like this uh yeah yeah continue especially the one he's, he's talking about which is uh probably a, like a sprawling epic that is supposed i just to go and come in like five ten minutes okay yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. We'll continue. Okay. No. Hmm? No, he's... We'll continue talking. Should we continue? No, no, I think he's gonna come back or something. I don't know. Bro, give live commentary. Yeah, I guess uh, right now... Uh, We're yeah, looking at curtains. His mom is here. There's a bunch of curtains. He has very big walls and big windows. Like, it's wow, man. shocking. Yeah, man, like, yeah, like, if you, if you can see in my window, there's like a... It's like one whole... It's like the, it's like the one hole for uh, making you feel like okay, there is an outside. Yeah, like a yeah. Hobbit window. Yeah, man. Oh man, uh, Hobbit holes. I'm all about Hobbit holes right now. I I right now work at uh, like a twelve hour shift, but it's only like four days a week and then three days a week. So mm-hmm. I have to like go around like with robots and stuff and read instructions. It's really boring. Uh, I have uh, audiobooks. So I got an Audible subscription. Audible, please subscribe this podcast. I mean, not subscribe, sorry. <laughs> please sponsor this podcast. Yeah. Um, uh, Audible has these amazing uh, audiobooks with sound effects and stuff for The Hobbit and for Lord of the Rings. So I listen to all of Hobbit and I have a rant yeah. to do. I want to rant about The the Hobbit. Okay. Who, because, uh, who narrates it though? Uh, I'm not sure. Because there's, there's I know some... Stephen Fry narrates uh, Harry Potter and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the whole series, basically. Yeah, he does. And even the, the dude, the old dude who uh, plays uh, Maester... Uh, not Eamon, Maester... Uh, the the bad Maester, the guy who has like uh, whores and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Who works for Cersei in uh, Game of Thrones. That dude is the guy who... who he was uh, this guy... Um, he was uh, one of the generals in Star Wars. Um, yeah, he he, he the narrates guy. the audiobook for uh, for Game of Thrones, like all of the books till Dance of Dragons. Mm-hmm. I think not till Dance of He passed away, I think, during Dance of Dragons. Or he's still alive, and I'm just like talking out of my ass. Uh, but still, like uh, the Hobbit, the book. Okay, I've read the book. I read the book when I was very small. I reread the book in uh, in my high, like in junior college, but. Um, I have a huge bone to pick with that uh, with that book because you put an awesome dragon which has a great scene and you build the entire story around the dragon. Smaug. I mean, you build the ent- this Smaug, Smaug, the desolation of Smaug. Yeah. Oh man, don't get me started on the movies. There's like so much stuff. Uh, there's a guy who made like a car- the cardinal cut of the Hobbit. If you ever want to watch it, he has cut out all the fluff. And there's just the story that's there in The Hobbit, which yeah. is good in movie form, but it doesn't work in book form for some reason. <laughs> like, it's right, not right, a cinematic yeah. book. It's supposed to be a, it's a hearty, like, I don't know, it was like, when I bought it, it was like 300 pages, that's it. And it was very mm-hmm. big letters. So, once you see, once you've like seen many movies and then you read that, you feel like this is not at all supposed to be uh, adapted at all. Right. It's a maybe they made a right decision to make it into uh, two movies. That would have been nice, but three movies doesn't make sense. They killed off the dragon from the because of some rando bard, man. The desolation of Smaug. Comes, man, that's like one scene. <laughs> you know, the rest of the movie is so so useless. Like there's such useless fluff in that movie. Bro, but what a name for a movie though. The desolation of Smaug. You know what the desolation of Smaug was. The desolation was just one village that the sma- that smog was la- in this the, it's the most laziest dragon okay it just burns up one town he's like hey, i burned this town just be scared of me 
and then he goes back into the cave. He never gets out. For 70 mm-hmm. years, he can never gets out. And then people don't believe only that there's a, a dragon in there. And then all the stories around the dragon are there. Then everything they tell. And then in one mm-hmm. chapter, in two pages, they, uh, they get uh, this dragon killed off by some guy who, in one sentence, they explained that, oh yeah, this guy killed his family. Wow. Chalo, over. Done. That was the whole story. And, dra- and the dragon died. And these guys found out that the dragon died outside the cave. They're like, oh yeah, we're waiting for the dragon. And these guys found out that he dies. And then they all go into a war for uh, the treasure that's there. Though that last mm-hmm. Hobbit film was the one of the worst films that I have seen. <laughs> I was talking about the book. I, I love Tolkien, but like, I think he just like, wanted to like uh, redo the screw up that he did with this book. And then he was like, oh, no, no, this is too bad a book. I have to like make three books to make this one good. And he made three really amazing books to like just uh, oh. fix this mistake. So, Karthik. And even the first chapter of uh, Fellowship of the Ring, you get everything. So, okay, so yeah, uh, Karthik, go on. That was a detour to uh, top fantasy picks future yeah. episode. <laughs> future episode is a teaser, <laughs> teaser for all fantasy. Yeah, so uh, back to uh, sci-fi. Sci-fi. So yeah, um, uh, first two picks are Scanner Darkly and uh, Brazil. Mm. Uh, Brazil is also like, me- worth mentioning starring Jonathan Price, uh, Robert De Niro in a cameo, uh, Michael Palin, also from uh, Monty Python. Monty Python, right? mm. yeah. Yeah, and uh, I-, I know one uh, fact about this movie, which is like when they were filming it, uh, De Niro, who, ha- who has just a very small cameo, I think he's in like three mm. scenes. And wow. uh, he, he was asking for his, uh, and they were directing it like, uh, they were, he, he was asking for some character motivation and uh, how to get into the skin of this character <laughs> and so on. And then all of them got annoyed and they shortened his role. <laughs> yeah, this is a guy who drove around in a taxi for three months for a movie and went to Paris to get fat. Beautiful. <laughs> like, what That's is my beautiful. character's motivation? <laughs> And he's got literally like three or four lines in the movie. So yeah, yeah. that is one uh, thing I know about Brazil. So those are my first two picks. Uh, third pick is just a very weird pick. This is just a movie I saw on HBO and uh, I think maybe in like sixth or seventh standard, which oh. is uh, Twilight Zone, the movie. Oh, the Spielberg yeah. movie, right? Uh, Spielberg was one of the directors. It's an anthology. Yeah. It's yeah. basically just, uh, if you know the Twilight Zone, it's like the original... Uh, right, right. Uh Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Right, right. <laughs> uh, actually, when Black Mirror came up... Why did we have up, to say uh, that? Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. uh, but originally, when uh, no, when Black Mirror came up, uh, I was just thinking about how nobody even knows how this is Twilight. inspired by right. Twilight yeah. Zone. Which is right, right, right. Literally done uh, 60 yeah. years before. Like in the 1950s, yeah. I think it started. 54, 55. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is not a very well... Uh, received movie it's not acclaimed at all i mean a lot of people hate Mm. it mostly because the people who saw it at that time which is 1983 had already seen the show and Mm. this movie is basically four or five segments which are exactly remakes of uh, episodes of the show but then i saw this movie first and it was it's a sci-fi movie and it's also horror and it's kind of this eerie horror thing but there's also proper horror scenes like uh, mm. uh, which are actually scary mm. so yeah. um, this movie is basically it's an anthology as i said so it it basically starts with this prologue which is like this introduction to the movie and it has albert brooks and dan Aykroyd uh, driving wow. this car and uh, yeah. I will put like 10 seconds of it here, but uh, be sure if you if you can check it out on YouTube, do check it out. It's very scary. It really scared me at that time. Hmm. Uh, it's yeah. just like, it's almost like this cold open type of thing. It starts with that and then it goes into like four different segments and all have this kind of eerie horror type of uh, feel to it. Uh, yeah. Just to describe one, uh, one or two, uh, one uh, segment is called uh, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. Which yeah. if you search, I'm sure the first thing that will come up is the TV show episode, which got really famous. And it starred mm-hmm. William Shatner, who is the original Captain Kirk from uh, Star Trek. Yeah. And uh, the the whole thing goes like, uh, this This is a guy who is afraid of flying and he's on a flight yeah. at midnight 
uh yeah. and he is freaking out like he's trying to take pills he's like uh, his head is dizzying and he looks out the window and he sees something yeah. is on the plane on the yeah. wing of the plane and he, he starts screaming he tells people that there is something on the plane everybody just starts calming him down uh they uh, try to lock him up uh, all kinds of shit happens and okay won't spoil it for you no don't tell uh, me. yes yes yeah, i won't spo- i won't spoil yeah, it yeah. You, you should watch it i mean <laughs> do watch yeah. the snl sh- uh, skit for this one right 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 it's, it's reference so many places i mean yeah, if you yeah. watch this and if you watch like you know simpsons or family guy or anything of that yeah. sort like bojack horseman I, there you will find references to it everywhere yeah right so that is one segment second thing is uh, there's something called kick the can again yeah. very very kind of weird eerie horror type of thing uh, it's this old age home which is a retirement home uh, exact uh, to be precise and uh, there is one person who uh, comes to the old age home who's like a recurrent visitor whenever this guy comes all the people in that old age home who can walk around or can you know uh, move around a little bit they gather on this yard of the place uh, of the building and they start doing something called kicking the can which is like you know uh, i guess a thing in the us which is like they literally just kick a can mm. around when yeah. they do that something happens to them wow this is the synopsis don't tell us yeah. anything more nice i haven't seen yeah, it yeah i won't say it yeah. so this is actually why i got really interested in this because each of these were like some concept where it was like oh what is happening right now like it's just like uh, very mind bending it's uh, like okay it's originally the tv show and all is just kind of ripped off so i mean ideally you should be watching the tv show but if like you know watching a 50s black and white tv show is too much for you <laughs> can always watch this one segment is directed by steven spielberg i believe it's the uh plane segment uh, i'm not sure actually uh, the other directors in this are john landis oh, again john big landis. guy george miller and joe yeah. dante i mean imagine this like there's there's a movie out there with these four directors and nobody knows about this yeah, yeah. most people <laughs> don't know about it i guess all of all of them are very 80s kind of uh, directors like already all of their biggest hits in the 80s so i right, guess right, right. not a lot of people will remember yeah i think most like, people were disappointed because it didn't live up to like you know the original shows like those are kind yeah. of traditionalists who kind of rejected it yeah of course uh, and also just just to like give another tease like the cold open opens like there's two guys on a road who are driving a car and then they mm-hmm. keep uh, Uh, keep driving and then they're kind of just messing around and they're listening to uh, some song i think it's midnight special uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's like this classic rock song and then one yeah. guy says to the other guy it's midnight and one guy says to the other guy uh, do you want to see something scary this is the beginning of the movie okay yeah. one guy says to the other guy do you want to see something scary it's like uh, uh, yeah sure and then he says uh, no but it's really scary though and he's like yeah i yeah, don't no, it's fine and then what something happens <laughs> I don't want to say what it is but yeah just watch it like even if you don't watch the movie just watch the first scene of it on YouTube it's available <laughs> and uh, yeah. also worth mentioning it like the last scene there is also it's it's almost like some TV show set up like it turned into a movie like there's a cold open and then there's four segments yeah. and in the end there's another conclusion which the conclusion harks back to the uh, the cold, cold open, open. Cold open right. yeah, yeah. But so actually, it's supposed to be in the even there used to be shows like this in the fifties and everything. You know, there used to be like compilations Ram Gopal of Varma uh, made, different episodes. Made something similar to that. Yes. Darna mana hai. <laughs> oh yeah, man. And was that's uh, brilliant when I watched it. It is. It's still. I think a lot of stories yeah. do hold up in it. It was pretty scary. Yeah. I when I watched first watch it, I still remember Vivek Oberoi's hollow eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that was, okay. The If Have you, you want to watch Safe Darna Ali Khan Manane, and Bowman Bo Manane. Yeah, just watch the Safe yeah. Ali Khan segment Manane. if you haven't seen it. Right. Oh, the right. the smoking one? The right, smoking? right, 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 right. Yeah. That yeah, one yeah, yeah. and and that, that one uh um I don't know how much do you like the Stop. Uh stop. Uh-huh. Right. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. Oh sh- I've been terrified looking myself in mirror after in the mirror after that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I mean yeah, no no yeah. spoilers here as well. I don't know if this, it's a spoiler. Yeah, so yeah. so I I mean that is more of a horror anthology here right, it kind right, of right. Uh, uh, mixes sci-fi and horror it's that sci-fi horror yeah, genre kind yeah. of yeah. like uh, right right annihilation also sci-fi horror right to an extent right yeah. right right i mean uh, yeah. you know uh, jordan peel uh, produced the remake of the show in 2019 of twilight zone yeah yeah, yeah i i, I watched yeah, it was on cbs episodes. all access right right i watched all of them are great yeah i watched two episodes i don't remember the names but i think one was uh, 
nightmare at 30000 feet hmm. so it was okay. it was not as good as the the original one i've seen the original one no but you know it, it was okay like it was a very okay type show i mean also yeah. like uh, if you see the old shows right there is a very very uh, evident charisma from rod serling like that dude can uh, that dude can like smoke a cigarette uh, yeah so rod serling is the narrator of uh, twilight zone so at the beginning yeah. of each episode he comes and smokes a cigarette and narrates like what is happening and he gives a monologue just regarding like eerie things happening right right isme yeah. jordan peel comes and does that Yeah. yeah he doesn't smoke a vape or something <laughs> but uh, he's it's not really not as i mean jordan peel is great he's a genius and everything like that but he's i don't know he can't really pull off something uh, like that i yeah, think no, give john david washington something like that <laughs> but yeah you, because that's the kind of person uh, that you need to like uh, sh- like show off a good good show half mm. of the like my jam for watching those old like i have not seen all of those uh, twilight zone uh, episodes and everything but whenever i could there's a like, lot there's a lot there's a way too many so i i only probably caught the late ones and uh, i mean i wasn't born in the 50s or in the us so <laughs> the ones i watch are all from like uh, like hindi dubbed uh, this things uh, yeah on um, star gold yeah. there were two of those and that's it <laughs> and then after that i saw on youtube mostly and that a very okay. bad quality but jordan right right i think all of it is available on youtube the old ones yeah yeah all, yeah, of, yeah. Them. all of them all of them yeah right now they have very good quality like they have put everything out and mm. you can check it out on youtube but they're very well worth watching because they are all based off of other literary works and everything mm-hmm. so a lot of the stories come from that so that you can like uh, really learn a lot and they're very short so you're not really losing much right 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 yeah. hmm. so so just I, to I, conclude i just one uh, concluding topic uh, uh, are there any good indian sci-fi movies uh this thing kago last year it came out yeah. it's uh, it's starring yeah, right, uh, right 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 vikrant masi and uh, shweta and, tripathi uh, i forgot the, Hmm. Sure, that's the party. Yeah, hmm, hmm, hmm. that's a very good sci-fi movie. It's a v- very well built. That's the kind of sci-fi I like. The character. I think. Sci-fi. I think perfect concept. Arthi Kadam has been like yeah, like working towards like making like sci-fi films and everything. Uh, she made a short film. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Time uh, Time Machine, right? Mm-hmm. I yeah. I don't remember the title. Yeah, yeah Time Machine. Time Machine, Time Machine. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. It's um, good. It's good stuff. It? Hmm. it's like uh, it's about a time machine i presume or it'll be or i mean it's a like it's, it's the... not about time it's about space wow just shut up uh, just just uh, just watch it i think it's it's there on uh, movie right now i'm not sure if it's there oh, okay, right now, but it was when i watched it i watched it on movie only but but uh, okay. she, her ideas are quite interesting how she uses uh, you know india as a cultural place and then adding that whole sci-fi genre to it you know yeah And she does in a very mature way, actually. None yeah, of I, that. I, I'm uh, not a you know, fan like of Cargo. Nor did I even. Uh, nor did I like Cargo as yeah. a film, actually, to be honest. Uh, because really? I, I, I feel it. I feel it shouldn't have been this that long, which it was actually. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean, it's, I it's a tad it. bit long. Yeah, I mean, it's a short film idea. Yeah, it's a little long. Yeah. I I can't recall anything hmm. else. I don't. Do you do you know anything sci-fi? I can't recall anything. I'm looking up science fiction movies in. India. Uh-huh. In India, I would Is say all India? of mythology is kind of I know okay not really that's fantasy but twenty uh, four, Mister India, two point oh. Oh yeah man. Oh. Okay yeah now we're getting it's getting better okay Ravan. over two point oh. Ravan action replay. What? Hey, Drona two thousand eight film. Every other movie is just the name of the movie, but this one it says. Drona brackets 2008 film. <laughs> wow. There's like I, uh, of course there's going to be a lot of Telugu and uh, Tamil movies that will be Are uh, you weren't there like a couple of uh, space Telugu films that came out tick 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 or something like that? Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. Right? Uh, uh, Tamil that's Tamil that's Tamil. Tamil. And and I remember yeah. that Malayalam film 5.25 Android Kunjapan. Kunjapan Android Android Kunjapan <laughs> version 2.5. <to 5. laughs> yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Something like that I don't remember. <laughs> uh hmm. hey, wow. what about that that uh, uh kartik's favorite uh, raju bhai's 9 n- yeah oh, wow. Pre- that's my rating out on 100 for that movie 
for people who don't know raju bhai is uh, prithviraj sukuraman and is uh, film Sukumaran. nine which came out in 2019 maran wow was it uh, no was no it see like that it's it's not that uh, great but then uh, the kind of i think he did that movie just to showcase like the you know cgi aspect of it which was good like the, you can't like blame the cgi you know it's just yeah. the, the 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 kind of plot and narrative got it's a little cliche and you know mm. that not that great that's all you know what yeah. i just this prakash raj in it what yeah yeah prakash raj is in you know what i just found out uh, uh tiger shroff's flying jet is also a sci-fi film i watched flying jet huh? of it, course it, it is you know where where does the climax take place in uh, flying jet please guess hmm. kanpur Hey, please guess properly. No, it would be my <laughs> Mars. Mars. It takes place on the Mars. Must moon. be Golden Temple. <laughs> What the hell, Golden Temple? <laughs> you'll get, you'll get lynched. Sorry, my friend. Oh no, man. <laughs> the inside. Also, also a sci-fi movie from 2019. Guess what it is? Based Hindi language, based on India's M O M mission. Hey, mission oh Mangal. Oh my God, the Mangalyaan, <laughs> yar. Oh mission shit, Mangal. that's actually a sci-fi. Why is this man. science fiction film? Hey, because it's Maya. about a space you know, mission, okay. dude. Oh, oh okay, man, we've don't. we've got a space guy here. It's a mission movie. It's like First Man. We've got it's a like space guy. Isn't um, you know, I met. Isn't it I a am... space movie? Like it's not a sci-fi movie, right? Yeah, What? it's a space movie. It's a yeah. it's a do- it's a biopic. It's not a okay. God, we bent back. Yeah. It's a throwback to our first podcast <laughs> of uh, of biopics. Biopics. <laughs> Man, uh, <laughs> I uh, okay. I met that. I met the guy. The, I met the guy who uh, who was one of the project directors in uh, in <laughs> of Mangalyaan. <laughs> He hates mm. the movie. <laughs> Obviously, what do you, what do you uh, expect, buddy? Yeah. What an expose! Yeah, I texted him. I texted him asking him like uh, he was my uh, he was my like uh, like corresponding scientist for something. And uh, he he I texted him. Hey, did you see Mangalya? I'm like <laughs> like what oh, what a horrible movie! <laughs> That's all uh, he said about that. Do you, what did you uh, hmm. ask uh, Sunita Williams when you met her? Uh, how was it like in space? Yeah. Hmm. Wow, and and she said it's it's just it's a just a job and everything. <laughs> Even you can do it. I'm like man, that's so insulting for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even you can do it. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, like it's a uh, space is nice. Please don't insult it. Keep space clean. Hmm. This was a good episode, yeah. How Recycle many recommendations for people to watch? <laughs> Get out of my personal space. Yeah. Where do astronauts um, go to drink? The space oh, bar, bro. Thank you. That's the podcast. Good night. <laughs> let's end it. No, let's end it. Like mic drop. Yeah, let's just end it. Yeah, so run away. away. Thank you. Good night. That's my time. See you, buddies. Okay, episode khatam. That's the end of the podcast. Just uh, follow us on Instagram on uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Queen Spotify. Spotify. All of that. Google Geo Podcast. Cool. Apple Podcast. Uh, We are not on Geo Seven. Uh, but anyway, no, we are. I think it it <laughs> automatically posts on Geo Seven also. I think. Yeah. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh really? No, okay. no, no. No. Then we okay. should. Okay. Geo. If G- anyway, if if Geo Seven sponsors us, we'll post it on Geo Seven as well. Okay. Cool. Uh, so if you have any recommendations, uh, message us on Instagram. Yeah, that's the yeah. podcast. Thank you. Bye. 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 Not much is known about the main plot of the film. Correct. So, do you want But to? But that was a point. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, is that the reason why? Is there something special about the? You've seen Inception. Yeah. <laughs> you understood it. Yes. You I liked know. it. Yes. Then you like Dilwale also. Okay. <laughs>